is Flavio Franchina uh, that will be speak, speaking about method development and optimization for monitoring probe exal breast metabolite using parallel MSB's analytical platform. Flavio, your mic. Thank, Go you. Ahead. Thank you for the introduction. The pointer is uh, pretty good. Okay. Hello everyone and thank you for being here. It's uh, really great to be back in person and thank you again to PH, Kate and Dwight for making this possible. So today I'm going to share uh, with you some considerations, some experiments we did for uh, method development and optimization related to uh, breath analysis in particular for monitoring some probe target analytes. Uh, of course, involving GCG using LMS based uh, detection. So when, you, when we, in general, when we start a new project, uh, we involved uh, involving biological samples. We really have uh, high expectations also because the impact indeed uh, can, we, we can have it's really uh, high on the like human health and we always want to uh, Try to better understand me metabolic pathways, uh, find biomarkers for certain disease states or physiological states, uh, predict uh, like model uh, disease, uh, better control, <coughs> control therapies, uh, and so on. Uh, but these these samples chemically they are very complex uh, because of, of the variety of the molecules in them. Um, and in most cases, I mean, always it's not even, uh, I mean, one, one analytical platform is not enough to fully characterize this, uh, these samples. When we go to uh, light, the lighter metabolites, so we talk about uh, volatile metabolites, we uh, somehow simplify chemically uh, the structure because of their nature, so they are easier to to separate, to isolate from magic components. But on the other side, uh, biologically, uh, since they are at the bottom of the metabolic pathways, it's even more complicated to back relate them to like, some reason why they are produced or down or regulated. And um, uh, going back to uh, the, talking about destruction, we uh, uh, reviewed like what are these extraction methods used, uh, especially for for breath, because breath it uh, holds great uh, great potential because of the non invasiveness and the, uh, its availability. Uh, and so uh, we can see that uh, the main uh, technology or technique used for for sampling breath relies on dynamic headspace extraction using thermal resorption tubes. And um, um, so let's like continuing on this topic. Uh, I want to remember the, the, that uh, breath analysis, it's, uh, it's old, it's a very ancient uh, uh, topic. Uh, and also with the, so since uh, uh, like the first uh, Hypotheses were uh, elaborated just smelling uh, fluids, but also with the, with the modern technology, uh, also with GCGC, the first proof of this uh, uh, sampling of these uh, uh, chromatograms was uh, it, it appeared in early 2000 by John John Seeley, who used at that time his uh, uh, differential flow modulator uh, with the dual loop and dual secondary column configuration, uh, sampling, trapping these volatiles in uh, multi-bed uh, tubes. This was a, these were the, the first chromatogram down there. Um, and this uh, was uh, like the first proof of, of concept, but with the time, uh, the demand is increasing. I mean, we want to we wanna know uh, always more. We want to link always different dots. And so this field is particularly challenging because it's a uh, very uh, interdisciplinary. And uh, uh, 
of course, there is a lot to study, a lot to read. Uh, it's impossible to, to know everything, but I guess what we have to uh, do uh, is uh, our best in like our main field. And we have to be able to, when we discuss with uh, the other scientists, uh, specialists uh, in other field, to understand like in which weak point we can uh, sneak in and improve that. And uh, on like analytical uh, point of view, breadth analysis uh, it's uh, very also challenging just uh, on the on the chemistry side. And uh, here I reported uh, like three main steps like with sample preparation, the analysis itself, and the data elaboration. Because again, uh, we don't have to think just for the analysis, but there is also the very important step, step of the destruction that we have to consider. And um, uh, we will, uh, I will discuss some of these uh, points uh, later today. Uh, I will, um, for example, the, uh, they, they are all regards the offline uh, extraction uh, sampling of bread. I will keep um, uh, out of this, the discussion, the data elaboration because uh, that is another chapter <laughs> and um, and also but i i want to say that in any case not doing properly the first two will make data handling even more an so it's very important to uh, properly assess the variability you have where is it coming from how you can reduce it so we start uh, with the uh, with the sampling uh, of course, I will talk about offline sampling of breath because I want to show what we do then with GCGC and there is no direct infusion on a GCGC system yet. Uh, there are many uh, ways to, to sample breath offline. Uh, the most common uh, involves the use of this uh, uh, temporary container, this bag container. Um, and after that, they usually the volatiles are trapped in a thermal desorption tubes and then dissolved into a GCD system. So these, these bags can, um, uh, there are many materials. Uh, here we, we tried uh, the contribution, the background contribution coming from uh, Tedlar and Multifoil. Uh, just filling them, uh, was an easy experience, just filling them with nitrogen and see what was the signal we were getting. And uh, I mean, we can see that on Tedlar, we have, this is, a, so this is, these are blanks, blank chromatograms. And Tedlar is contributing with a few uh, prominent peaks. These are uh, coming from residual solvents, uh, but they are easy to identify and then to remove from the further step of the, of the um, workflow. Uh, instead, the multifoil on the other side is giving a, a strong contribution, especially a, a, it's a nitrocarbon contribution. This, it's, uh, uh, it may affect negatively the uh, further processing also because first we have naturally present hydrocarbon metabolites and second, some of these hydrocarbons, they are already uh, labeled as potential biomarkers, so it would be complicated to deal with, uh, with that if we have an additional uh, contamination. And uh, no matter how many times you condition this, these bags, you flush this bag uh, before the use, this, this background will always be there. And the same, uh, even if I don't have the time to show uh, results, but the same can be said for the tubes. Tubes as well, they have a background release, constant release, uh, one desorption after the other. Another way we uh, we tested these uh, different beds, uh, we used, uh, so we tried how reproducible are these bags to keep and release breath, so volatile in, in that. And we used this little device here uh, so essentially it's kind of in, an injector, uh, a GC injector. So we uh, inject liquid standard on top. This is a hot chamber 
uh, and we flow and there is a flow nitrogen gas flow in, in it that is uh, filling then the bag or, or the tubes and we did this with uh, some standards after that uh, okay we transfer the content of the bag in the thermal desorption tube and then we analyze them in our uh, dual stage uh, thermal desorption coupled to a GCGC with high resolution MS. And this is what we got. Uh, this system, first of all, this method allowed us to, to get uh, replicates, so we could have like, uh, more sense to do statistics on them. And uh, as expected, we saw, first of all, that, I mean, uh, using the bag, there is an additional variability added compared to uh, the transfer of the analytes directly into the tube. But also importantly, in between the bags, in, the, in between the different materials, we have also an increase of, uh, a, a, a significant increase of variability uh, in the multifold. So for this purpose, uh, it, it was, I mean, we uh, considered the tether bag more suitable for, uh, for uh, breath analysis and indeed they are the most used generally. Going on, we can uh, also uh, evaluate what is this, the performance and the selectivity of the packing material of these uh, thermal desorption tubes. And uh, to do this, we, uh, we did a similar experiment. We still use the same tool, this time to, to to spike breath samples. So uh, in this way, we sim simulated uh, our metrics, so, but we also had our target analyzed to monitor. And so uh, also in this way, it was possible to, to have replicates to fairly compare, in this case, like all of these tubes containing uh, different uh, adsorbent materials from weak to strong adsorbent, uh, packed singularly or in combination uh, containing like the uh, different, uh, as I said, uh, carbon back blacks or um, polymers, porous polymers for uh, for the as a solvent. And this is an example of uh, the breath, a breath sample sp spiked. This is how the mixture we used based covering a wide range of volatility usually that we uh, detect in, in normally in breath and these are instead the response we got uh, from these uh, experiments um, and uh, as we can see there is uh, there is a variable response based of course on the volatility uh, of the of the target analyte in this case but also based on the selectivity of the trap Generally, we see that weak sorbent like Tinax TA, uh, they do a better job trapping uh, higher molecular weight uh, analytes. And that in any case, Tinax TA also um, uh, consistently trapped uh, these uh, target analytes. We, we additionally, uh, so this was a qualitative uh, evaluation, but um, we also, because of this, the replicates we had, we, we could also, uh, for each group, uh, we could also uh, calculate the reproducibility. And uh, in this, TNAX showed the, the lowest uh, variability in, uh, in this among all the, the analytes. Uh, and this can be explained because uh, in the other uh, tube, uh, the packing materials were uh, can be susceptible to water. And so breath is a humid sample, so that probably contributes to, to, to the variability we observed. Moving on, uh, we also performed a, a longitudinal uh, sampling experiments on some probe analytes. This was within the context of the uh, Peppermint uh, Initiative which came born a couple of years ago, and it aims to uh, at um, standardizing breath analysis. 
giving uh, individuals a digestive pill. It's, it's a pill based on peppermint essential oil um, and uh, sampling at different time points, uh, doing the analysis, of course, and then uh, build these uh, elimination profile curves, which are similar to those Pharmago synthetical uh, curves, to the, which can give a lot of insights, both on the metabolic uh, elimination of these of, of the selected analytes, but also on the system you use and your methodology to do uh, to do this. We used uh, ten participants for this. Uh, it was uh, seven for seven uh, time points each, uh, and these were just the instruction we gave them before to avoid additional contamination from diary products or from the diet in general. And this is an example of uh, a chromatogram uh, acquired um, after this is 60 minutes after the pill. And we can see that there are uh, already some uh, of these uh, uh, terpenes coming from the pill itself. So we we were able to, to build uh, uh, the, these uh, washout curves for uh, these are reported. Here are reported 10 uh, of those metabolites. Uh, most of them, they are terpenes. And uh, we also evaluated the volume of the bag. So we use these to, to see, OK, uh, what volume should, should we use? And uh, finally, even if uh, with the five, with the bigger container, of course, we, we, we got a higher signal. But in any case, we, we, it was not justified for the uh, time consumed to, to prep all the bags. So we prefer to stay on one liter because we had enough sensitivity with one, with one liter. And uh, everything I showed uh, till now, it was run on, uh, on this system with this uh, column set. It was a quad jet and an high resolution uh, MS. Uh, but we wanted to, part of the study was, okay, we have to extend and try this approach uh, to other platforms. So to see how this, uh, if we have a good fit uh, of these elimination profiles also to other instrumentation, if the tubes are, uh, so the technology for sampling is good to perform these like multi-site studies. And, um, we exploited uh, the sample recollection. So essentially, the part, the split part during desorption was again recollected in the same tube. And so the tube was then uh, re injected, re desorbed on a second uh, platform, GCGC platform. It was, of course, a, a different setup. Uh, we want, we want, there, was, there is a, it was with a flow modulator and uh, as detector, it was a parallel quadrupole mass VOB detection. These are um, two example chromatograms, again, breadth samples, parallel detection, where we can uh, see those terpenes, those target analytes. And we can see there is a, a difference in sensitivity difference in band broadening um, and but for this targeted analysis uh, we it was uh, we could uh, we could track uh, good the, during the sampling points those uh, those analytes in any case and finally we put together all of these cures here they are the cures of the tracked uh, probe analytes in the three detectors and uh, we got a, a, a really good uh, fit uh, in between them, confirming that I mean all the the procedure and the, uh, and the concept of this uh, washout profile were like consistently uh, monitored. So going to the conclusion, uh, we we saw that in general trap 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 tubes um, are uh, also a, a good. Uh, um, alternative not only for breath analysis, but uh, in most cases, uh, in vivo study, they are also uh, side 
excited by in vitro study. So they, these tubes can be, this, this uh, technology can be, uh, can be used to reproduce the same experimental uh, conditions for sampling also in, in culture based studies. So this can, can keep the link of extraction uh, together and this is important. So not creating bias, for example, using a different extraction technology, for example, SPME tubes, it would be a different selectivity in the structure and would be really complicated then to relate back. Then uh, we have seen that uh, this exploiting this flash favorization uh, allows uh, to generate replicates and with replicates we can make more sense of like our experiments. We can see, simulate sample uh, but also it can be used for a, a standard internal standard uh, addition. That uh, the use of um, probe analytes uh, really help uh, the understanding, uh, the development, and the optimization of the entire analytical work workflow and also of the analytical platforms used. And all of this is because what we have to do, it's very important to reduce any variability we add to, to this analysis. Uh, because already understanding the biology, it's, uh, it's complicated enough. And in these um, TNAX uh, tubes packed with the TNAX showed the lowest, uh, the lowest variability with these uh, samples, with this humid sample. Um, and also that uh, if uh, you really have to use a secondary container, like this bag containers, you know that you add a certain variability to, to your analysis, but it's uh, with using tether bags, it's uh, the lowest variability. Of course, uh, I mean, in the recent years, there are uh, also different devices for, for sampling. Some of these let you skip uh, the, the step of a, a temporary container, so th those probably really help like reducing the variability. And uh, finally, yeah, I thank you again. Thank, uh, want to thank my research group in Ferrara, and of course, uh, like the uh, collaborator who contributed to what I showed you today from uh, from Liège.